Well, greetings from Vlore or Vlora, Albania. It's a windy day up climbing the hills and I've been in Albania about uh, two months now. And what I thought I'd do today is kind of go over, I don't know, top 10 list if you want to call it that, but 10 things that uh, I think are important to know uh, before you travel to Albania or if you're just curious to know more about Albania. So, to give you some context, just so you don't think I, you know, landed in the airport, got off for a few days and made a video. Um, like I said, I've been here almost two months. So I started in Tirana, which is kind of north central in the country. Uh, made my way up to Skoder or Skodra in the north, in the mountains. Uh, then made my way over to Pogradec on the east side, also in the mountains on Lake Orid. And then back to the center, I went to El Basan, and then Eurogaster, and then I went down to Saranda, the southern tip of Albania, start of the Albania uh, Riviera. And now I'm in Vlore, which is northwest of Saranda, also on the coast. And in a few days, I'll be heading back to Tirana and leaving Albania after two months. So I've been around the country. After two months, it's hard to say I'm an expert on anything, but I've spent some time in the country and here are 10 things I think you know, are worth mentioning. And if you're curious about Albania, worth knowing. So here we go. So number one on my list would definitely be the people in Albania. If there's one thing I'd like people to know about Albania for my time here, it's how great the people are. From the moment I arrived, and I've needed help a bunch of times, right? I'm a foreigner in a country I don't speak the language. I'm trying to find Airbnbs and new cities. And every town I went to, I had trouble finding the Airbnb. Residential addresses just aren't precise in Albania. They're, they're just not. Um, so you end up walking around, trying to figure out you know, where you are. And every time I asked somebody for help, they didn't just point, right? I mean, they actually spent like 15, 20 minutes walking around the city with me until I got where I needed to be. And one time it was close to a half hour. This couple was just walking around with me, you know, making sure I was okay and found my place and pointed out grocery stores along the way and amazing. You know, just another example, when I was in Saranda, on the south end of the country, I locked myself out of the Airbnb. I didn't have my cell phone, didn't have the keys. The only thing I had was, you know, a 5,000 lakh bill in my pocket. It was about 50 bucks. And I ended up just like retracing my footsteps of where I, you know, spent time and spent my money so people would know who I am. And turned out I just showed up at this barber who cut my hair a couple days prior. <laughs> and you know, we got there through the language barrier, but you know, I told him I needed to borrow your phone and log into my Airbnb. And you know, long story short, he had to get the guy who owned the business next door to him involved and his friend involved. And I ended up getting in my apartment, but there was like a handful of people that took 20, 30 minutes out of their day to make sure I was okay and got into my Airbnb. So you know, just stopping people on the street saying hello. It's a very warm and inviting country. And it's the people in Albania that make you feel that way. So number one is definitely the people in Albania. They're great. So the second thing I'd say that you'd probably want to know is that in Albania, they use a European power plug. So I don't know about you, but I always have phones and computers and things that need to be charged. So I would recommend going online and just search for European power converter. Amazon's got a ton of them. I use one that has a bunch of different countries that I could use it in. And more importantly, it has four USB chargers on the back of it as well as a normal uh, AC plug. So my laptop can be charged, my phones, 
my batteries for my GoPro, etc. Um, and it's very convenient. So, anyway, not all that sexy, but good to know. European power plug is used in Albania. So the third thing I'd say you should know is that Albania is a cash economy, for the most part. Uh, some of the larger cities and restaurants and shops and things probably be able to use a credit card. Um, where I tend to go are the side streets and local shops and things like that where, you know, not only do they not take credit card, they often don't have a computerized, like, register. So you get a handwritten bill that was tabulated with a you know, calculator. And I find that as part of the charm of, you know, visiting these kind of places. But um, it's just not as computerized as you might be accustomed to. So just something to keep in mind that you're going to need to carry cash. And in Albania, they use Lex. Now, some of the most common Lex for the local shops that you're going to want to have on you are the 2,000, 1,000, 500, and 200 bills. Um, those are common. Uh, if you go to an ATM and you take out larger sums of money, you'll also get 5,000 like notes. And, you know, just as a way to eyeball what a lek is worth, a hundred lek is roughly less than a dollar, about 95 cents. So a thousand lek bill is less than $10. Just a way to eyeball it when you're dealing with lex. Um, and then there's coins. So you have a hundred lek coin, a 50, a 20, a 10, and a five lek coin. And like I said, those are things that you're really going to want to have in your pocket when you visit some of the local bakeries and smaller restaurants and small towns in Albania. Um, so there's plenty of ATMs around, so don't worry about that. Typical ATM charges are 400 to 800 lek, I found. So three to seven dollars American. And uh, yeah, just keep in mind that you need some cash around in your pocket and uh, Go and have a good time. Number four, that would be safety. Albania is a very safe country. At least I found it to be. You know, before coming here, you read things online and, you know, I think some people are overly cautious or take one thing and, and maybe didn't go their way and just, you know, label a whole country for it. But I've been here two months. I've been to different cities and towns, large and small. I've been out morning, noon, and night. I've been to main streets and back streets. I have not felt unsafe one time. The, the only time I felt uncomfortable, I actually was in Škoda one time and was having coffee with uh, the couple who run Nelu Adventures, uh, Naomi and Luke. Hey guys. Uh, check them out uh, if you want. But anyway, we were having coffee in Skoder, just talking trade, and there was just one panhandler that came up and was just very aggressive. But, I mean, that was more being rude than violent or unsafe or anything. It was more just kind of squeamish, <laughs> like just an awkward setting. So, you know, I would say come to Albania and don't worry about safety. Keep in mind that anytime you travel, that there are some things you don't want to do. Being drunk two o'clock in the morning, going down a dark alley, anywhere in the world, is just a bad idea. But barring general safety things that are just common sense, Albania is perfectly safe. I, 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 I don't know how else to describe that. Whatever you read, I don't know what these people are talking about. Um, people are safe in Albania. Not only that, go back to number one, the people in Albania are very welcoming and loving, and I just, I find it hard to believe people, uh, you know, find Albania unsafe, when I find it to be an extremely safe and pleasant country. I don't know what else to say about that, so, <laughs> that's it. So number five, something to be aware of more than anything else, are the heaters and AC units. Now. I rent Airbnbs for the most part, and you know when you get to you know the first day checking in and it's cold out, 
you'll have to turn the heater on and it takes a while to heat the place. It takes about a day, to be honest with you. And there's typically one unit in the whole apartment, no matter how big it is. It has been my experience at least. Um, there has been one experience where I'm staying now in Vlore actually, where there's two bedrooms and a main room and there's actually a heater AC unit in each of the rooms and that's nice, but it's not what I found to be common. And I don't think it's a problem, but again, just something to be aware of that maybe contact your Airbnb host a day ahead and if there's nobody renting it, maybe ask them to turn the heat on in advance that would help um, or if it's hot same problem with the AC sometimes it takes a while to cool down so again not a problem but just something to be aware of that I've noticed that you know when it comes to heating the place when it's cooled out it takes a while and you know part of that also is just as a side note you know a lot of the entrances to these apartment complexes and condo buildings you know they're they're open access so it's just there's no barrier to get to the main elevator to go up stairs um, so if it's cold out it's cold in the elevator and it's cold in the hallways outside of the apartment so the apartments get as cold as it is outside so it takes a while to heat up but uh, again just bring some sweaters with you and curl up in a blanket first day is a challenge sometimes but it's worth it I promise. So number six would be buses rule in Albania. So I came in to Tirana, the capital, on a plane. But once you're in Albania, you're gonna be taking a bus if you're going to different towns and cities. They do have technically a train, but it only goes to not even a handful of stops. And to be honest, not really anybody uses it. Um, so you're going to be taking a bus. They also have car rentals, of course. If you're a confident driver, going through the mountains gets a bit sketchy. Um, but that is an option. By and large, though, I think most people are going to be taking buses. And one thing to note, they don't really have bus stations at the different towns. They have big parking lots where the buses kind of line up. And in the windshield, they have a big sign that tells you where they're going. Um, some cities don't even have that. They just have a street where it's kind of known that well, this is where the buses line up and things of that nature. Um, they're always on time. They're very affordable. They're very clean and very safe. So to be honest, before Albania, I've never really taken the bus much. School growing up, but other than that. Um, and if I had my druthers, if uh, I could take a half hour plane ride versus a three and a half, four hour bus ride. I'd probably want to do that. But the bus drives are, are fine. They're going through very scenic areas. It goes by quick. They stop usually uh, halfway through and you go out and stretch your legs and get a bite to eat at a restaurant and things like that. So it's very pleasant um, and it's not that big of a deal. It's very safe, very affordable and you know, they do have taxis as well, um, but going from city to city that way gets a bit pricey. Um, but again, they also have buses that um, not only take you for, between cities and towns, but within larger towns and cities, they have a bus line as well. So I like walking everywhere. You know, I'd rather walk a half hour than take a bus, um, but that's just me. But uh, they do have very affordable intercity buses for you know like a 10 lakh coin per stop or something like that um, but definitely bring cash with you again and uh, buses rule so if you're looking to go around different cities and towns you can just go online and uh, just search for uh, Albanian bus tour or bus routes and things like that and there's a number of sites to help you out so number seven Albania is very affordable. Um, I don't know if I'd call it overly cheap, but some things are and some things aren't. So 
go over some examples. Um, the obvious one is if you want to come from the United States to Albania, then buy nothing but the brands and things that you used in the United States, then you're not going to save any money because they're going to have to import those and you're not, you know, it's going to cost you more. It might even cost you more than it does in America. That said, um, things like a coffee or a cappuccino here are very, very uh, inexpensive compared to a Starbucks back home. I can get an espresso or a cappuccino here for 100, 150 lek, so around a buck. Uh, so that's nice. You can get at those same cafes a very nice pastry, fancy pastry kind of dessert thing, uh, also for about a buck or you know 100 to 200 lek. Um, dining out also very affordable compared to you know the United States. Um, I would say, you know, a big lunch or a small dinner, if that makes sense. You know, something where you have a drink and just one meal, you know, one course. Uh, but at a nice place, you can get it for 500 to 800 lek, so four to seven dollars American, uh, and, and a nice meal. If you wanted a fancy meal, um, you know, at a higher end restaurant, appetizer, soup, salad, a drink, coffee, main course, and dessert kind of deal. A very nice, you know, two, three hour deal. Um, I would budget anywhere from 1500 to 2000 lek. So 14 to 19 dollars American. And that's going to get you a heck of a dinner in Albania. Um, you can certainly pay more. Um, but on average, I think that's a good budget. There's a lot of street vendors and fast food and kind of grab and go places that um, are really fun and, and good local eats. And those will run you anywhere from 100 to 300 lek, so a buck or two American. And ice cream and things like that, all very affordable. Local bakeries especially. Fresh, you know, loaf of bread is 50 lek or 50 cents and you get a big loaf to bring home so it's good if you have a carbon sweet tooth albania is your friend believe me um, so it's affordable um, again if you want to go crazy there are places here that will take your money if you want to go crazy but by and large if you just kind of come and you know just have a moderate taste for things then you'll find it extremely affordable. Places to stay, I use Airbnb and my budget for Albania is $25 to $30 a night. If you're gonna do the hotel route, I would budget $50, $55 a night. Again, you can go higher or lower, but I think that's a good budget uh, to bring. Um, my I've been here a couple months, like I said, and I spend about sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a month, and that includes health insurance that I get for one hundred thirty dollars a month. So, if you work backwards from that, you know that'll give you some idea what to expect per week or per day. Um, but yeah, I mean, seventeen hundred dollars you can live in Albania very well a month. So work backwards from that. But again, very affordable because that includes, you know, basically rent and health insurance. When I lived in Florida, I was $2,500 just for rent and health insurance every month and I didn't even start living yet. So all in to be about $1,700 with everything in Albania. Yeah, very affordable, very affordable. And it has all the amenities that you, you want. So. You're not sacrificing anything for that savings. So Albania is Albania's a good place. You should go. Believe me, you should go. Number eight, get yourself a SIM card. I get asked a lot, do you get a SIM card or not? And you know, it's so inexpensive and so convenient. I would recommend it. I use a company called Vodafone. V-O-D-A-F-O-N-E, I believe. And they have one at the airport, which I used when I landed in Toronto. And the package I got was 1200 lek, or $11 American. And that gets me 8 gig and 1,000 texts and local phone. 
and it's just really affordable. They have one for 900 like as well, or $8 a month. And uh, it's just a, a lot more convenient than trying to hook up with other things and make the internet work. And it's fast, it's reliable, and inexpensive. So get a SIM card at Vodafone, and it's in the Toronto Airport Terminal. And it's every city in town has one every three or four blocks. <laughs> so they're all over the place. Very convenient, very affordable. Vodafone SIM card, highly recommend. So number nine is English is spoken sometimes. Um, obviously in larger cities, the capital, Tirana, uh, Skoda, Lore, the tourist destinations, you know, there's a higher propensity of people to speak English. But for the most part, they don't. Um, the younger the person is, the more likely they speak English. I can't tell you how many 12-year-olds are called into uh, a conversation I'm trying to have with an adult because they actually speak, you know, both languages. Um, which is amazing to me. I, you know, I'm in my 50s and I only speak one language and here's a bunch of 12 year olds running around that speak two or three languages. I, I think it's awesome. But anyway, so the younger people certainly speak English or English enough to answer a basic question. Um, and the ones that do speak English, and you can get around, don't worry about whether you speak English or not. You'll get around and just you know open up Google and, and translate American to Albanian. And the translator is, is pretty accurate, I found. But that said, the people who do speak English, keep in mind that, you know, sometimes um, the, the temperament, I don't know how to describe it. You know, like in Shakespeare, if you remember like in Othello, they always said, you know, what's the matter? And in in today's world, what's the matter means, you know, what's wrong? Are you upset? That kind of thing. When in the day, what's the matter just meant exactly that. Like, what are, what are you trying to say? It didn't mean anything negative. And you get a lot of that, you know, people, you know, just actually yesterday, I was getting a pastry after dinner and, uh, you know, I walked in and the store owner looked at me and said, what, what do you want? And, you know, at first, you know, when somebody in the States, said, what do you want? You know, it's like, oh, it's, it's a negative. It's kind of like, you know, but here it's, what's the matter? No, wh what do you want? They're saying, how can I help you? Is what they mean. And if you look at the body language, it's welcoming. But sometimes the words and sentences that they use are not matching what their body language is. I don't know, it's very hard to describe, but um, just keep that in mind that, you know, even though they speak English, they're probably going to say yes, even if they mean no. And they don't always mean literally what they're saying. So that is just my tip in... in kind of dealing with people that might come across and speaking English in Albania. Um, but other than that, you know, English is around enough probably where you're going to go most of the time. When you go off the beaten path, it's uh, probably not going to be uh, much English spoken. So again, just have a local SIM card and uh, open up Google and type in, you know, translate English to Albania and you're good to go. Again, people here are amazingly patient and welcoming and really enjoy trying to, you know, talk to someone that they don't know. So, you know, just embrace the moment when you come across times when you, you don't have an English speaker and you need an answer. Just be patient and uh, work through it and you'll have a friend for life by the end of the conversation, I guarantee. So, anyway, that's my two cents on English. So for number 10, I would say Albania has a lot to offer 
as far as what you can do and go see. I'm in Vlore right now, and as you can see behind me, the waterfront is far below me because I'm on top of a mountain right now. So, you know, Albania, for being a small country, has an amazing amount of sites and different landscapes. You have flat prairie lands I've been through. I've been to the north and east mountain areas. I've been to uh, Pogradec on Lake Orid, the large freshwater, you know, waterfront vibe. I've been to Saranda and now Vlore, the oceanfront vibe. I've been to cities. Um, it, it really has something for everyone in just a country that I think is about 200 miles from north to south. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And I'm glad I got to spend a couple months here and really take some time to look at all the different types of landscapes that Albania has. I'm certainly not an expert, and I'm not saying that, you know, I covered them all, but I covered a lot of them in two months, and I can tell you it is worth visiting for a week, a month, maybe a year. Um, very impressed with Albania. And these are just 10 things that, you know, I, th I think are, you know, something you, you should know and just kind of come here to experience. But I hope you enjoyed the video. It, uh, it's been a blast, Albania. And I think you should visit if you get a chance. I think you'll like it. It's very different in a lot of ways. And I hope these 10 tips will help you if you decide to come and if not at least expose you to a little bit of what life is like in Albania. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like. If not, that's okay. But I appreciate you watching and uh, until next time, be you and be groovy.